I'm Tian. And I'm Paige. And this is a mini-sode. But don't worry, there's still time to take control of our own destiny, to leave it out all on the field, to write our names in history. Oh, I love Coach Paige. Now drop and give me 20. Boo, I hate Coach Paige. And this is <laughs> In These Cleats. All right, folks. Big weekend in the NWSL. Let's talk about it. Paige. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still processing the yeah, game. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, I mean, this league is so tough. The table's never been this tight. Like, any team can still yeah. make the playoffs, except Kansas except City. To, yeah, but up until last night, literally every single team was still alive yeah. in the playoffs. Yeah. Which is crazy for a league. It is crazy. It just shows how exciting and like good the quality of the game is. It's why I love to play, really. And we have San Diego clinched. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know why I hate them so much. Well, they're your, 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 they're your state rivals. I know. I, I, I know you care for the team people. I do. But as a team, we hate them. down with the wave. <laughs> and we had uh, Washington Spirit. Win a late one. Trinity Rodman scored. Yeah. The very end there. Pretty sick goal. Special players make special moments like yes. that happen. Yeah, it was great. Great for them, but we needed them to tie or lose. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you needed but you needed racing Louisville to lose and they did. Great. Yeah. And North Carolina in the rain tied, which was decent. We would rather have the rain lose, I think. Okay. But yeah, a lot of results kind of went our way. We're Angel City. We still have a chance at the playoffs, um, which is exciting. It's but so exciting. Every game is a championship game. <laughs> it's exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So you have two more games left. Yes. Against uh, Houston. Against Houston and? Portland. Okay. So you close the season, the Portland Thorns. Yeah. Two more games. They we, still got it. They're still in it. We are. We are. And we believe. We do. We're playing we're I know you're playing, playing so, really good. I know. <laughs> we had 21 shots on goal last night versus Orlando's 11, yeah. and they scored this, like, magical banger. Um, I know. Yeah, it came out of, like, left field. No one was ready for it. But, yeah, we got we to gotta figure out a way to, to finish our chances, really. Yeah. I believe you're going to do it. <laughs> you got two more games left. A lot of things have happened. A lot of things have to happen. What is like the ideal scenario? You win the last two games and you need oh gosh, OL Rain and OL Rain, Orlando. Orlando to lose. Yeah, I've never rooted against Marta before, and <laughs> now I want the, she's going down. She's going down. I want the greatest <laughs> player in the world to go out crying. <laughs> <laughs> Just like she did in the World Cup. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Legacy be damned. She still played. No, like, she was amazing. She was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> there was a one. There was one run where she. Sorry to say, I think she beat like five of us, and I was yeah. like, Oh my god! Yeah, she still has it. She still has it. Yeah, I'm not rooting against her, but I'm not rooting for her to. I'm rooting for her. As a person. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, we've got more NWSL Roundup coming to you next week. Stay tuned because it's going to be a crazy couple of weeks. Our guest today is one of the best soccer players of all time. She is one of the world's most capped players with over 230 international appearances. She's an Olympic gold medalist three times over, a World Cup champion, a UNC alum, a UNC assistant coach. She's played for North Carolina Courage, Arsenal, Kansas City, New Jersey Wildcats, Sky Blue, Boston Breakers, most recently, Shelbourne. Please welcome Heather O'Reilly. Hey, 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 hey. Hi, guys. What's up? Hi, Heather. Heather, thank you so much Hi. for taking the time to sit with us. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. What an honor. No. I, and I'm getting out of like momming right now, which is great news. My husband is uh, putting, the, <laughs> putting my little dudes to bed. I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old. And I said, I got to go on this really cool podcast, right? <laughs> right smack in the middle of bedtime. So no, it was awesome. I am thrilled to be here and you guys are doing, you guys are doing the Lord's work. So uh well done. Keep it up. We are honored to have you. Being here with you is weird because we, we chat here and there and I'm like, I haven't even spoke to you in like 10 years, it feels like. So oh, I know, I know. I I'm know. really excited to, to catch up. No, it's been less than that because Paige was in town 
in Chapel Hill, I think it was just after the first baby, right, Paige? Or was it the second baby? I don't know. I've lost track. It was your first. Oh, it was the first. And it was your first time coming back playing after. And you're like, I I might be pretty shit, but. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I literally gave birth and then like whatever. I had like gone on a couple walks, blah, 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 like they recommend. (laughs) And then I'm on all these group texts here in Chapel Hill. You know, I live here in Chapel Hill, uh, part of the university in a lot of different ways. And so when there's all, you know, people back in town playing pickup, um, you know, I hear about it or there's always people getting back together or whatever. And yeah, it must have been after William um, because it was the summer. His birthday would have been the summertime, which Paige, you would have maybe come back into town for something. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm on this text and I saw so I, I, I hear that people are playing soccer up the street. And I'm eight days <laughs> after birth. <laughs> Eight. Right, Paige? Is that right? Yes. And we were all like, one, is she going to be, is she going to add value to our pickup? Uh, two, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> two, how, and I'm pretty sure I asked if you were like leaking. Can I say that on the podcast? Yeah, no, 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 no. no. We can, it was definitely within, for some reason, eight days is like sticking in my head. Eight days? It was definitely like within like a two week thing, right? And yeah, let's just say like I didn't have, I didn't have very much power in my... <laughs> no, you were great. Adductor. You were great. <laughs> vagine area. I couldn't make... I couldn't, like... Yeah, no, it was fine to, like, just a simple trap and, like, pass a short distance. But anything over five yards, I was like, yeah, I don't I don't quite have the, like, the... The, the the core strength for this sort of movement yet. But, no, it was, <laughs> it was a blast. So, thank yes, thank you for having me. And, um, yeah, I'm just glad that my that my insides didn't fall out <laughs> right there at the intramural fields at UNC. <laughs> it was I, bet, I bet everyone playing with you also felt that way. <laughs> yes, that would have been graphic. <laughs> what did your doctor say? Like, oh, is- I don't tell them everything. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, they would definitely say, like, wait 12 weeks. I waited, like, one and a half weeks. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, people but- can't do a simple trap and pass without having a <laughs> human, so... <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyways, so I'm not sure if Paige told you how we know each other, but we didn't overlap at Carolina because I'm quite a bit older than her. Not by much. But I would always kind of come back and play with them. And, you know, I live here in town and we're both, you know, proud alumni. So, uh, yeah, we're Tar Heels to the end and always connected by that. So you're like the Tom Brady of soccer. You've retired, came out of retirement and played again for the Women's National League. What was that like for you and how did you come to that decision? And I think this is really important because we all struggle with, should we keep playing? Like, should we have kids? Um, and obviously I want to know if the support system was there for you. Cause it is hard. It is hard one being a professional athlete, but two having to make those decisions and having a support system and, and all of those things. Yeah, no, I think that's a great question. So um, yes, just get everybody sort of up to speed because, well, I was just um, at Megan Rapinoe's retirement, international retirement, just the other day in Chicago. And so that, of course, brings back a flood of memories. So in 2016, um, I wrapped up my international career, which it was just the right time. I had been on the team for like 14 years and, um, you know, I did it. I did it. I feel like I, I left left it all out there and I think it was just, you know, the right time. So um, had a, had a great international retirement, and I had a lot of anxiety at, at that time because, you know, in my head I'm like, well, am I really going to keep playing after my time with the national team? It's kind of like, you know, at that time there wasn't a ton of money just in the in the d- domestic leagues across the world, mm. and it was just kind of like, well, why would I do that? Like I've already played in World Cups and Olympics, and like. Okay, it's 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 time. I did it, right? But I still loved the game so much and I felt like I wanted to play club. And at that time, it hadn't really been done that much before, you know, to like retire internationally and then continue playing. It was very popular on the men's side, right? Mm-hmm. Like you hear, I don't know, Stephen Gerrard or like David Beckham, like they're when they're done on the national team, they they still play for a lot longer on, you know, on club teams. And a lot of them go overseas because it's, there's maybe a lot of money or it's just sort of like a retirement gig. Um, not the MLS. I'm not talking about the MLS, <laughs> but other leagues out there might just be Messy. seen as a, 
Yeah, it might just be seen as a retirement gig to some people. And so I sort of wanted to do that. Mm. And at that time, it's very much different now, but at that time, I wanted to play in England. And it was kind of like the reverse. We were talking like Wayne Rooney or David Beckham. I was retiring from international play and top-level soccer, and I was going to go apply my craft in England because I never, I never played overseas, and I always kind of was attracted to that idea, but I never really had the guts to do it because at that time they really wanted you to stay in the, in the States, Mm -hmm. uh, if you were going to be on the national team and they kind of, you know, some players, you know, did it, but like, it was a little bit risky to like be out of sight, out of mind. And I didn't, I never wanted to like ruin my chances with the U S team. Right. So I was always just like in with the, the NWSL. So then when I was done, it really kind of opened up an opportunity for me. And I went and played at Arsenal for a season and a half uh, in England. And then uh, after being there for a year and a half, it was like apparent that, you know, my my time was done there. It was like time for me to come home, um, even though Arsenal had actually asked me to like stay on as player coach and like kind of start to like build my career with them um, sort of post playing. Right. Like guide me into that like next chapter. Again, I think I had like some anxiety about giving up the game. Um, and now I had really done it, right? Like this was like the cherry on top. This was like the one thing that I hadn't done. And now I had done that. So my husband's like, okay, like I'm here for it. Like, I love you. I'll support you. If you want to keep playing, like whatever. But like, you know, what's now? And, and, and so then I was like, what would be totally full circle is for me to retire with the North Carolina Courage. And so I came back and played for another season and a half with the Courage. It was awesome. Like, we won a lot of trophies. We won all, you know. I know. It's unfortunate. We won it all. We won it all. We won, <laughs> we won a lot of things out there. Um, as Paige knows, yeah. You guys were stacked. Not fair. It was a fruitful couple of years for the North Carolina Courage. And I was able to, like, literally walk off the field. And, and that field, Paige, is, is special, right? Like, yeah. there and carry. It was, like, so many Memories. UNC games. And now I was, like, mm. walking off the field as a champion. It was awesome, right? One of the reasons why I retired was because, yeah, I wanted to have kids. And I was in my mid-30s. And I never wanted to mix babies and, and playing. Like, some people do, some people don't. I just, like... Y- you can probably tell right now, like my, my ADHD is like off the charts. Right. So I, I can't even like remember my shin guard sometimes. Like how am I supposed to bring another human being into this, this mix? Right. So I was like, heck no. Like I am going to focus on my career and then I'm going to have kids. And that's exactly what I did. And I was very fortunate to like pop these two babies out pretty much back to back as Paige saw (laughs) blah, 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 blah. Anyway. So I go to Shelburne of Dublin, and I played Champions League three years after my retirement, after two babies, and not only that, I score a goal in the first game wow. on a header, and we won 1-0. This is like in the qualifying round, and then we lost in the second game to a, to, uh. to a team that was just better than us. But I did it. I did it, and I'm super proud of that. The goal was kind of cool as well. So, yes, I have had a few different comebacks. I think, I think I'm done after bringing my baby to Australia for the summer as I was working with Fox Sports. I think it's time for me to, like, just bunker down with the kiddos and and my husband and just actually be present and not be all over the map. But never say never. Never say never. (laughs) What was it like? To like be down at the World Cup with your little like with your little baby doing Fox analyst work. Like what was that like for you? What is that pivot? Is that something that you want to keep doing? And is it difficult? Because when I watch games, I'm like, God, like I I, I maybe talk crap and I'm like, I could do better, but it's way easier watching oh, yeah. than actually playing the game. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, first of all, I think you'd be great, Paige. Oh. Uh, yeah. So this was my second major tournament working with Fox. I was in uh, France as well in 2019. Mm-hmm. And so I've only worked as a studio analyst. I haven't really done too much in-game kind of uh, color commentary. That's hard. Yeah. Um, I've done a few like college matches and stuff. Um, but I, I enjoy the, the studio work. For me, the, I like being in front of the camera. I think I spent most of my like adult life being watched like as a mm-hmm. soccer player. So I, I don't mind that aspect of it. And I think that there are some similarities to playing that are super cool that I wouldn't have expected like before I got into it. First of all, 
just being live, right? Live television is a different beast. In sport, there's no Mm do-overs. And live television, well, there's no do-overs, right? So it's a different beast. Like when that light comes on, like your adrenaline gets pumping. You got to like show up for the big games. You need to like bring your energy. And so from that aspect, I really enjoyed it. And, And certainly there is the team aspect, Mm -hmm. right? Like I'll remember in 2019, I FaceTimed Kelly O'Hara shortly after the final was over and they were all on the bus, right? And so, you know, these are a lot of my dear friends and people that I played with for a long time. And they were in Lyon, of course, where the final was. And I was in Paris at the set for Fox. And so, you know, we're like screaming and they're chugging beers and like doing all the things. And somebody asked me, they're like, oh, man, are you bummed you're not in Lyon tonight to like party with the team? And I genuinely was like about to hang out with the Fox crew and like Alexi and all my colleagues that I had been with for like a month. And I was like, no, like I'm that's not my team anymore. Like Mm -hmm. this is my team now. And I really felt like that I had this like real bond with these people, especially the big events when you spend like a month together in the hotels and, and stuff like that. So you get very close with your colleagues. So I do feel like there were a lot of similarities between um, television and playing and it keeps you sharp. Like it keeps you learning about the game. I think that I probably would have been a better player if I had done this a little bit more while I was still playing. Can we talk about a little bit about UNC since we both share, um, share the same experiences. I know you mentioned in another podcast in high school where you, you loved the game, but you weren't really around your people. And I felt the same. So I didn't love, love soccer. I loved basketball, but I was also getting pulled in so many different directions until I came to UNC and everyone was obsessed, obsessed with getting better at 12 at night. Like people would go out to bars, but me and my teammates would sneak into the tin can, which is an indoor facility and do technical, like our our fourth session of the day. And it's because people were obsessed with getting better and the sport. Mm -hmm. And it's like, holy shit, I finally found my people. And you mentioned that. And like, how amazing was the UNC program for you? And how amazing is it to find your people? Now you're with your people outside of soccer. Like, how's that experience for you? Yeah, no, I think I think that you're you're spot on. I, I think as a and I talk to a lot of young women, like middle school girls. I have a mentorship program called Home 14 that I launched last year because it's a hard time, especially for girls, like in 13, 14 up through high school. Like, I'm sorry, it's horrible. With the ad of social media too, it's just like I can't even imagine. Oh God, it's horrific. <laughs> I know. Horrific. From the changing of like bodies to the social comparison to like, yeah, there's to Paige's point. Like, I think for some reason, like as a teenager, like clearly I was like a very good player and had high ambitions and stuff like that. But I like tried to like downplay them, you know, like if I was staying extra, say as an example, if I was staying extra to do shooting, right. I would wait until everybody left. And then I would do it because I I was like, (laughs) because I was sort of embarrassed to be a go hard, right? It was like not seen as cool or maybe I would be sort of insecure that somebody would be like, oh, she's like being a suck up or something. I was like, Mm -hmm. just very concerned of what the other girls would say about me or something. And so, yeah, I think getting to Carolina and just meeting people that are just like you that are like, no, it's actually super cool. Ooh. Can I say that? Yeah, Super of course. Cool we to, can believe to it. To try if you hard. Want. <laughs> and no, it's fine. To try hard. Like, I think that's above and beyond. It's super cool to try hard and to like not be ashamed to say, like, yes, I'm trying really hard mm-hmm. here. And like, it's for everyone to see. Like, I found it's just like nice to be part of something, I think. And that's why people love sports teams, right? And mm-hmm. Um, what you guys are building at Angel City is super cool, but people want to be part of something and, and especially like a personality like myself that like just really cherishes community. And so, yeah, I just love, I love Carolina. I, I think obviously like my time with Carolina soccer and Anson Dorrance is, is a legend. He's been coaching the team for over 40 years. Like the way that he made me feel about myself and like just had this ability to like drive me and like prod me, even though like sometimes it was like, 
so irritating because it's it's irritating to be like pushed like all the time, right? Like sometimes you just want to rest. Yeah. You just want to rest. I'm so tired. <laughs> You just want to be like, no, I'm this good enough is good enough. And he's just like Mm-mm. pushing, pushing, pushing yeah. and like gets you to heights that like you were probably uncomfortable with if, if it was just up to you. Right. And that's like what a magnificent coach is to like get you to a, a, a level that you would have never been able to get to on your own. And, um, and he did that for me. Before we go, could you tell us a little bit more about the media side of things? You have this serious XM show called Played In. Like, well, can you tell our listeners a little bit about it and what you hope to do with it moving forward? Yeah, great question. Thanks for asking. Yep. Uh, uh, anybody can listen to the show I do with Lori Lindsay called Played In on channel 157 on Sirius XM. I think that I'm always very uh, inspired to grow the game. Right. Like I was given a, well, I don't want to say given an opportunity because I really do feel like I, I worked my ass off. Right. But like I worked hard and got a little bit lucky. Right. Like when Mm. I was younger and broke into the national team and I was on the national team for a long time and I got to see the world and I got to play in major events. And I do feel like I have a responsibility to give back to the game and make sure that people, you know, all people get to enjoy it and, have Can I say something really quick? You create sure. your own luck. You work so damn hard and you create your own luck. So you have well, some thank responsibility you. for that too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> thank you. No, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. My point is that basically like I want to le- I want to continue to grow the game. It was good to me and I want to continue to make it better and um for the most part, you know, we are on a very positive trajectory in mm-hmm. terms of a lot of things. Um, clearly this women's world cup was eye opening in terms of other countries doing super well and we didn't have a good performance, but I do think that like we still have, yeah, a lot to celebrate and I'm happy to be kind of part of that side of things now that like, I don't have to focus my time on the field. I can focus on growing the game in other ways. Um, yeah. And mostly it's just fun. Lori and I just kind of shoot the shit and talk about <laughs> a lot of NWSL results and, you know, obviously analyze whatever's kind of going on in the game right now. I want to be boots on the ground a little bit. Like yeah. I can certainly talk behind my microphone and say things aren't good enough and be, you know, on, on Fox and talk about, you know, that players aren't technical enough, blah, blah, blah. Well, I want to do something about it. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to, um, to put money where my mouth is. And, and we're rooting we for you. That. Yeah, we really are. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time to sit with us. It was so wonderful yeah. to have you on. Thanks for watching In These Cleats. See you next week. <laughs>